Hi, I'm Richard from Drive Green, and today we're going to be taking a look at the new Jaguar I-Pace. The I-Pace has always been a very impressive EV, and today we're going to be looking at what's new and improved with this latest model, and hopefully at the same time helping you decide whether it might be the right EV for you. The iPace was originally launched back in 2018 into a marketplace that was very much dominated by Tesla at the premium end, and it was hugely successful. It won European Car of the Year, and it went on to be the fourth best-selling EV in the UK in 2019, an incredible achievement for such a premium priced car. Although the iPace was the first premium electric SUV, and although it was a very tough act to follow, it now lives in a much more competitive EV marketplace. You now have the Audi e-tron, the Mercedes EQC, and now the BMW iX3. As a general rule, I don't like drawing direct car-to-car -car comparisons. Uh, every car has its different advantages and disadvantages, and I like to bring those out and let you decide what's important to you. However, I must admit, compared to its competition, the iPace generally has set the bar really, really high. Looks-wise, the iPace is undoubtedly a good-looking car, very stylish and with a real presence. It doesn't have that typical blocky SUV look. It manages to look sleek and sporty at the same time as being quite a high riding car. It looks nice from pretty much every angle and there's some lovely details on the car. Uh, for example, you've got this sweeping air intake under the bonnet here, which adds to the car's aerodynamics. You've got this nice grill that you can have in black or with chrome detailing like this one here. And of course you've got the lovely Jaguar badge in sporty red. The original iPace, just like the new one, is an incredibly handsome car. Its crossover SUV styling and sizing meant it was also very practical, with plenty of passenger space and a really generous boot. I don't actually think anything's really been changed with the car's exterior, and honestly, I haven't actually noticed any notable differences at all. Which is okay, as the original iPace was, and still is, a really good looking car. And it doesn't yet need an update, or there isn't a great deal of room for improvement in my opinion. It's the same story when it comes to the interior of the car, which again hasn't really changed, and it's still as well made and luxurious as the original car. This car has a really nice premium luxury feel about it. It's very nicely designed inside, the materials are really good, it's very well put together. It does make you feel very special, it makes you feel successful, like you want in a premium luxury car. It genuinely is a very nice place to be. In the new iPace we're driving today, we've got the performance seats as opposed to the sports seats that were in the, uh, the earlier car we were driving before. Uh, both are very, very nice, uh, certainly built to a very premium standard. They're very comfy, they're very, very stylish. And particularly when you're looking at the higher spec models, they're incredibly adjustable. Um, they also, when you're looking at the SE models and the HSE models, you get a memory seat function. Uh, and that's both on the passenger and driver's side. You're able to store three different seat settings, which is a really nice touch. On the top spec HSE model as well, you've got uh, cooled seats also, uh, which is a nice touch of luxury. However, I always find that a little bit strange, the idea of cooling one's bottom down. There's loads of space in the front and the back. Luxury travel for all your passengers, especially when the centre cup holder section is pulled down. This also doubles up as a pull-through hatch when you're carrying a long item in the car. The boot is plenty big enough to mean the iPace ticks the all-important practical family and holiday car roll as well. There is also a small storage space under the boot floor and a small frunk, offering some useful extra storage for charging cables for example. I really was honestly amazed at how well this car actually handles, especially given its size and its weight and its high riding SUV design. Especially in its dynamic sports mode, it handles brilliantly. There's plenty of power there, ferocious acceleration. In fact, I have to say probably it ranks within my top few EVs in terms of its actual handling. It really does corner like a sports car. It's ground up EV design and even weight distribution, dual motor or wheel drive format and the 296 kilowatt motor delivers a brilliant handling 400 horsepower car with a super fast 4.5 second 0-60 time. 
The I-PACE's truly amazing and engaging drive really does set it apart from other EVs, especially in the SUV sector, as it really is brilliant and I think it's very, very hard to beat indeed. One thing I do like with this new I-PACE is they've given it a really nice sound, which I know sounds strange because obviously we're used to EVs being quiet as they should be. And don't get me wrong, this is still a quiet, well-insulated car, uh, and certainly with the stereo one you can't hear any noise at all. However, if you like driving in a sporty style and really putting your foot down with lots of acceleration, the car makes this wonderful noise. I'm not sure how well it's going to come out on the car's audio, but it's a lovely, deep rumble. It doesn't sound like a car engine, uh, nor should it. However, it is a really, really nice sound, and I think it adds to uh, the driver engagement. You know, you really kind of connect a little bit more to what's going on under the bonnet, and I think that adds to the, the fun of the car and the enjoyability when you're driving, well, in a performance style. Another nice driving feature is the car's slippery surface mode. I mean, it's not quite a 4x4, however, you have got a dual motor, all-wheel drive setup, and if you've got air suspension on your car um, and you've increased the ride height, you've got, you know, quite a capable sort of multi-terrain sort of vehicle. And also it adds a lot to safety when you're driving, in particular in wet, slippery, icy conditions. Range-wise, Jaguar still have the I-PACE is doing about 280 miles worth of driving range. Uh, and whilst that is probably completely possible uh, in the right conditions and with a, perhaps a sedate driving style, I think it's worth remembering this is a big, heavy car with lots of power. So I think in most cases, you should perhaps rein in your range expectation a little bit more. Personally, I would have it around about 220 to maybe 250 miles, depending on your preferred driving style. It's not the most efficient of cars, and I would like moving force perhaps to see Jaguar squeeze a little bit more range out of their 90 kilowatt hour battery. However, all this performance uh, and the fact it's a real driver's car is inevitably going to come at the expense of range. 250 miles, however, is still plenty of range for most people, and the car is also capable of a 100 kilowatt charging at the right rapid charger. So it is possible to more or less fully recharge the car in about an hour. Most rapid charging is, however, still done at 50 kilowatts. Uh, as a result, I think you know, with a 30 minute charging stop at somewhere like the motorway services, you're going to be looking at delivering about an extra 70 miles of driving range back into the car. But obviously you start with a great driving range, 250 miles, say, to start off with. So with a little charging stop every now and then, you still have a very capable and decent long range EV. The new I-PACE is also capable of three-phase 11 kilowatt charging if you're lucky enough to have a three-phase fast charger either at home or at work. In all honesty, this isn't going to matter to the vast majority of people as not many people are going to have a three-phase charger at home. Uh, as a result of which, uh, despite the upgraded charger, you're still going to be charging at seven kilowatts like most EVs. However, that's going to give you roughly 20 miles worth of extra range for an hour's worth of charging time at home. Again, this isn't really relevant because you're rarely charging from empty to full and most charging is done overnight. Just like with the original iPace, in the latest model you've still got three basic trim levels. Uh, at the lower end you've got the S, and then you've got the SC, and then the top spec HSE. Uh, on top of these trims there's also a multitude of different spec items you can add to your car. The lower spec S trim is still a very, very nice car, although it does lack a few of the premium touches. The mid spec SE, uh, on top of the standard S spec, adds quite a few extra bits. Memory seats, 20 inch alloys, power tailgate, premium LED lights, and nicer seats. The top spec HSE model, like the bright blue original version we were driving earlier, contains a number of other options as well. You've got matrix LED lights, cooled seats with even more adjustment settings, a Meridian 3D surround sound stereo, and adaptive cruise control with steering assist. With the new iPACE, you've now got uh, an extra trim level available, which is the black edition. It's available fundamentally in an SC and HSE spec. Uh, however, as standard, it comes with a pan roof and adaptive cruise control. Uh, however, with the black spec, it's mainly uh, about the look of the car. It has a much more aggressive appeal. Uh, you've got black alloys, a black grille, and a slightly bigger tailgate spoiler. There's a whole host of additional options you can add to your iPrace, and these include 
a multitude of different 20 inch alloys. There's even a couple of uh, 22 inch ones, which are massive. You've got the different seats. You've got a variety of different color interiors and headliners, multiple different uh, finishes on the dash. This um, secondary touchscreen here that you use to control the heating system, that's a, an extra item of spec that you can add to the, the lower spec S model, however it's standard on the HSE and the SE models. Um, you've got the beautiful pan roof of course, you've got a 360 degree 3D camera system, self parking function. You've got a driver assist package, which includes a steering assist as well. You've got a head up display, You've got this clear view, rear view mirror system. Um, you've also got uh, the air suspension, which is an hour smart air suspension system, uh, which will automatically adjust the ride height when you're going at high speed. Uh, the upgrade to the air suspension, the uh, 3D element to the 360 degree camera system and this rear view clear view mirror are all new items of spec that are available on the new iPACE. The infotainment system has also had a bit of an upgrade uh, and whilst uh, graphically it looks a little bit more stylish, fundamentally it's just the same as the original version and to be honest it still isn't a very nice system to use. The icons are small and it's poorly structured with multiple sub-menus and it's just really quite hard to get along with. That being said, whilst it might take a little while to get used to it, um, if this was your car you would spend the time on it to crack its secrets. Personally, I think the infotainment system is the weakest part of this car. Uh, in fact, you could even say it's the only weak part of the car. However, it's not a deal breaker because the car more than makes up for it with everything else. And if like a lot of people, you use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, uh, both of which are standard within this system, then the fact that the Jaguar interface isn't very good is gonna be largely irrelevant. Despite all its brilliance and its high equipment levels, especially in the, the higher spec models, uh, I, I feel the original iPACE is lacking a few things. Uh, it doesn't have auto hold and it doesn't have stop start functionality and its adaptive cruise control, both of which are things that I would expect to see in a premium priced EV at this level. Also, there's a bit of a lack of adjustability in its regen braking. You've only got two settings, and the higher setting for me isn't quite fierce enough. So I would like to see some more settings. I'd certainly like to see a higher regen level so you can enjoy a more one-pedal driving style. And I'd also like the regen braking to be more easily accessible, because on the original iPACE, uh, you can only adjust it when the car is in park. Well, the good news is Jaguar have improved these few things. Um, the car now has auto hold, which is great. That's something I really, really did want to see on a car of this price point and at this level. The adaptive cruise control has also been improved with the stop start technology we're after. Uh, I also fancy the regen level of the car has been increased slightly to give it a more of a, uh, more of a one pedal driving experience, which you want. But the regen adjustment is still done through the touch screen and there is only a couple of settings. However, in all honesty, it's not too hard to change. And in reality, to be fair, you'll probably set it to high and you'll just leave it like that for most of the time. Perhaps only changing it to low when you're cruising at speed on somewhere like a motorway. So the already brilliant iPACE has had multiple improvements with this newer, latest model. Whether you're looking at a used original iPACE or whether you're looking at buying a, a brand new iPACE like this one here, you will not be disappointed. The iPACE is a brilliant car. It's very good looking, it's very practically sized, it's well spec, the interior is lovely and it's an incredibly well made premium car. It really is a very special car and it's got the performance and handling to match. When you look at the premium electric SUV market, I think the iPACE has set the bar very high indeed. In fact, it's going to be a very, very hard electric car to beat. I hope this video has been useful in helping you get a bit more of a feel to the Jaguar I-Pace as well as what's new about its latest model. If you'd like to find out more, if you'd like to arrange a test drive, please do get in touch. Please also be sure to check out our other EV review videos and subscribe to our growing YouTube channel. Thank you ever so much for watching.